It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl, a special edition. The two teams you're about to meet have won once previously, and today's winner moves on to the elementary school semifinals. A lot at stake today. Let's meet today's teams. First, from Mount Rainier Elementary School, would you please say hello to Jonathan Vigil, Nick Owen, and Paul Barquillo. And from Ridgecrest Elementary School, here they are, Christopher Okata, Jada Nunez, and gorgeous Azobi. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on the Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to the difficulty of the question. The easier ones that are on the left, worth 5 and 10. The tougher ones, worth 15, 20 and 25, the ultimate. The toughest of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points. Never a penalty for incorrect answers. And to the two rounds today, we will have a competitor to move on to the semifinals. Let's go over and make sure everything works properly. Nick, would you try your buzzer for me? Looks and sounds good. Good luck to you, Paul and Jonathan. Jada, would you try the green teams? Also, looking good and sounding good. Good luck to you, gorgeous, and to Christopher. Are we ready? Are we? Yeah. Okay, that's good. All right. Congratulations on making it this far in the competition. Let's have a good game. May the better team win. M before R. We go alphabetically. So, Mont Rainier and Nick, let's play the bowl. Zoo Parade for five. Zoo Parade for five points. Teams, one insurance company advertises itself with a gecko. Another, Mont Rainier. Elephant. An elephant, yeah, the largest land animal. That's where I was headed. Paul knew where I was headed. He was nudging already. Go red. Uh, Zoo Parade for 10. Zoo prayed for 10 points. Teams, because their diet is of such low energy foods, this only strictly vegetarian bear has very small ridge crest. Ko koala. Not the koala, no. This only strictly herbivorous bear has very small organs because it has very low energy food, Nick. Grizzly bear? The panda. The panda bear, because it eats bamboo. And now all of its organs are small as a result. Okay, try again, Red. Body assistance for 10. Body assistance for 10 points. Teams, the Ig Nobel Awards are kind of funny awards. In fact, they're said to be, keep in mind the category body systems, they are so funny, they're said to be tongue in what body part? Tongue in what? Tongue in cheek. Tongue in cheek. That means like, mm, this isn't real. This isn't all that serious. Okay, try again, red. Let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, if you go out early in the morning when there's a meteor shower, and you see all those shooting stars, that light comes from those bits of rock burning up in the atmosphere. What force is causing that burn-up, Mont Rainier? Friction? Yeah, it's friction with the atmosphere. It is that that mercifully burns up all those bits so we don't get bopped on the head. Go red. Science potpourri for 10. Potpourri for 10 points. Teams, doctors have actually been able to make five different kinds of organs and even a pizza using these kinds of printers. Matt Rainier. 3D. 3D printers, absolutely right. Yes, all the rage still. Amazing what they can produce. All right, Nick. Green things for 10. Green things for 10 points. Teams, generations of kids have gone out and plucked honeysuckle flowers, popped the bottom off, sucked the bottom. They don't get a drop of 
honey from the honeysuckle, they get a drop of this. Mount Rainier. Nectar. Yeah, nectar. That's what all the bees and all the hummingbirds are going after at the bottom. So we kind of cheat. We're not pollinating when we do that. Go. Dateline signs for 10 points. Dateline for 10 points. Teams, if you play sports on artificial turf, there is some concern. Some soccer coaches say that their goalies are developing cancer, perhaps because the artificial turf is filled with this substance that is derived from crumpled up tires. What kind of substance is it? Rubber. Rubber, yeah, those little bits of rubber that sometimes you find in people's hair and you know it gets all over their clothing and their skins. It has not been indicted yet, but there is a suspicion that it could be dangerous. Okay, nice answer. Go, Red. Zooprate 15. Zooprate for 15 points, teams. I need two parts, two parts to give you the points. Of the 40 species of cat on Earth, only one lives in groups. Could you name the group and name the cat? Ridgecrest. Name the group and the cats that live in it. Um, lions and prime, prime. Lions and prime. I don't know how to say it. But. You're not saying it quite right. Gorgeous and Christopher, are you helping her out on that? Yeah. What is it? What's she trying to say? Predatory. Not quite. Matt Rainier, can you give us the cat and the name of the group that it lives in, the only cat that does so? Lion and pride. Prides, yes, a pride of lions. Sorry, I wanted to give that to you. Not quite right. Go red. Body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. Teams, astronauts in space, when they eat, have to use a lot of Tabasco hot sauce because what sense organs don't work so well because food is not pulled down into the pits on the tongue? Ridgecrest? Your lungs? Not your lungs, no. What are those pits on your tongue that don't work so well in space because there's so little gravity so Astronauts have to douse their food with Tabasco sauce. Taste buds? Taste buds, yeah, the taste buds just don't work so well. Kind of bland up there. Okay, go. Red. Let's get physical for 15. Get physical for 15 points, teams. The worst hurricane, the most destructive hurricane, is what category on the Saffir Simpson scale? Of all the numbers on the category, which number is the worst hurricane? 7.5. Not 7.5. Good try. Ridgecrest, the worst hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale is given what number? What category? 8.5. 5. 5. Goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The recent one we just had. Joaquin was a 4. Why it caused so much damage in the Bahamas. The buzzer is rung. We've come to the end of the first round to play. Our score is Ridgecrest 50, Mont Rainier 125. Mont Ridgecrest, you're coming back in the second half. We'll be back with that second half in a moment. Don't go away. I started mentoring my mentee, Dantre, four years ago. I always thought about doing it. It always seemed like a good idea. We were both nervous when we first met, but we kind of, everything kind of fell into place. Mentoring is important to anyone that's pretty fortunate in life to have a little bit of time to pass on that knowledge. Etienne's a very close friend. I look at him as a brother and a father figure. He taught me to just focus on the big picture because I would like to give back just like Etienne gave back to me. To be someone who matters to someone who matters. If you're like most families, you probably have video game fans in your home. But not every game is right for every kid, which is where the ESRB ratings come in. They help parents make informed decisions for their kids. And there's an easy to use mobile app that gives you detailed info on specific game ratings. Video game consoles have parental controls that you can set to block certain games by age rating. So they get all the fun and you get peace of mind. Welcome back to Science Bowl, this special edition today. The teams here today have won once previously, and they're vying for the chance to move on to the semifinal round. Let's find out about the players if you didn't have a chance to meet them the first time here. And we do have two former alternates who are on set for the first time. We'll meet them in a moment. Let's go first to Mount Rainier over there just off Route 1 uh, near Hyattsville in Mount Rainier. And uh, 
a peace school. Every year you have a peace parade, and boy, that's just a, uh, a signature for your school over there. Who's your principal, Nick? Mr. Hens. Mr. Hens, and uh, your sponsor is Mr. Wallace, yes, and he is here today. He's very proud of what you've done so far. We're so grateful to Kevin for all the work he's done with Science Bowl, and uh, tell us any alternates on your team, Nick. We have Eunice Lynn and Jasper Ellis. They'll be out in a few moments here, and uh, in addition to the peace parade, what is something else about Mount Rainier you like to brag about? Um, that uh, we have a lot. We have a computer lab and um, a media center with tablets. That's wonderful. That's one boy. Those tablets are important here today. Nick, you're a fourth grader. Yes. Yeah. So you've got a couple more years of eligibility. You're a very smart guy. How do you know so much science? Um, I study a lot, and my uncle helps me. Wow, oh, boy. He's a he's a good role model and a good mentor for you, Nick. someday what do you want to do? I want to be a chef. A chef. Yeah. And uh, we'll come to your restaurant. I know you like to make spaghetti, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You make a good sauce? Yes. All right. Uh, yeah, something tells me you do. All right. Paul, nice to have you here today. You want to be a scientist someday, huh? Yes. Yeah, and you still have not quite sure what field you want to go into. How'd you get interested in science? I got interested in science because I like science, and science is my favorite subject in school. Ah, okay. You get good grades? Yep, well they picked well because uh, you're an important member of this team here today, as is Jonathan, and Jonathan, uh, um, you're going to be an engineer someday. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, how'd you get interested in engineering? My grandpa works in cars and my dad does too. Yeah, so you're out there, and boy, nothing better than tinkering with cars and fixing something and saving money so you don't have to pay someone else to do it. Um, you wanted to be on the show for what reason? Um, I like science. You know, STEM, science, engineering, technology. Absolutely right. You uh, participated in the STEM fair, the science fair at your yes. school? A very important thing to do. Nice to have you back, Jonathan. Ridgecrest, nice to have you guys here in your matching blue shirts. The Ridgecrest science geeks over there, and we say that with much respect. Jada, nice to have you back again. You're a great captain. How do you know so much about science? Um, because um, throughout the years, we have lots of teachers who make science fun for us, and then they give us some more knowledge what we already know about science. Yeah. Boy, that was a key word you mentioned there, fun, because if school isn't fun, you're not going to want to learn anything. You know, and uh, my contention is, you know, the yellow pages could be interesting in the hands of a right teacher, you know, because they inspire you. You're a great student. Tell me about your school. Who's your principal? Um, Miss Dunn. Miss Dunn, and she was here earlier. We hope that she'll be able to come back out again. And the sponsor of your team? Uh, Miss Rowley. Miss Rowley, absolutely right. Mr. Uh, Brewer, too, I believe, is here. Yeah. Yes, all right, we'll bring him out. And you had some alternates, some new alternates. Who are they? Um, this is Christopher, and this is Gorgeous. Yes, and you have two other members of your team? Uh, who are they? Um, that's Hay um, Juan and Marquise. Wonderful, yes, and we'll bring them all out in just a few moments here. And uh, Jada, before I leave you, again, uh, one of the best things about Ridgecrest, what do you tell people? Why do you like your school? Because um, Ridgecrest is a place where you get your creative side out of you. Yeah, we were talking about that before. Yeah, the, the opportunities to be yourself and express yourself in your own way, they're very important. All right, and someday what are you going to do? I'll become an electrical engineer. Yeah, you and uh, Jonathan have that same idea here. Uh, gorgeous, nice to have you with us today. Tell us the gorgeous story. What do you do in your spare time? Well, um, I like to cook like um, Nick, and I like to play tennis and cycle with my um, unicycle. That's wonderful. Boy, so you keep yourself busy, you're active. Would you like to have your own restaurant someday? No. No. <laughs> no. Uh, 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 it's a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah? yeah? Cooking for yourself and your family is one thing, but satisfying a clientele every night is different. What do you like to cook? Nick says one of his specialties is spaghetti. What's yours? Tacos. Taco. Oh, I like fish tacos. Did you bring some today? No. I could have given you 50 extra pounds. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just kidding with you. Nice to have you here, gorgeous. Christopher, tell us your story. What do you want to do someday? Electric I want to be an electrical engineer. Wow, okay, a lot of good mathematicians here today. What got you interested in that? Because I like to be active and creative. Yeah, absolutely right. What do you do in your spare time? I play sports. Like what? Football, soccer, and basketball. Oh boy, you're a, a multi-letter man over there. What position do you play on the football team? I, pl I play line um, linebacker. Linebacker, wow, well, you're a talented young guy. It's good to have you here. Nice to meet you. Let's get back to our game. Ridgecrest is at 50, 125 for Mount Rainier. Lots of points to give away. Nick, red team, last correct answer, start us out. 
Science potpourri for 15. Science potpourri for 15 points is a visual question to start the second half. Look at the monitor teams. You know Aesop's fable about the crow? The crow couldn't reach the water at the bottom of the jar, so he kept dropping in stones until the water rose high enough so he could drink it. Pretty smart. Multiple choice question. Did the crow, by dropping in the rocks, reduce that jar's density, mass, or volume? What did it reduce? Ridgecrest. Its density? Not its density, nope. By dropping in those pebbles and raising that level of the water then, did the crows reduce the jar's density, mass, or volume? Volume. Volume, yes indeed. Pretty smart bird there. Go red. D Dateline science for 15. Dateline science for 15 points. Teams, children with what a initialed respiratory disease oftentimes suffer attacks from secondhand smoke. Mott Rainier. Asthma. Asthma, yeah. I thought everybody would jump on that one. Go again, Red. Green things for 15. Green things for 15 points. I know you'll get this one. Teams, the collective term for all of the algae and small bacterial pieces and jellyfish that swim in the ocean have what same name as the owner of the chum bucket on SpongeBob SquarePants Ridge Crest? Plankton? Plankton. Plankton. Yes, good. Go. Finally. Green. Uh, let's see, Zoo Parade for 25 points. Zoo Parade for 25 is a visual question. Look at the monitor, please. Teams, this is the walking frog fish. Yep, it's a fish that can barely swim, but it walks along the bottom of the ocean on what P initialed fins underneath its body that have the same name as the muscles in your chest. What P initialed fins is that fish walking on? They're known as the, okay, Nick? Pectorials. That's exactly right. Boy, just in the nick of time, those are the pectoral fins. Thank you, Jonathan. Really nice assist there. Go, young man. Zoo parade for 20. Zoo parade for 20 points. Seems a multiple choice question. Teams, hunters know that deer will defecate anywhere they want. Wolves are purposeful poopers, though, because they're sending messages to other members of the pack. But if you're a hunter, you don't call it poop, you don't call it feces, you call it spat, scat, or smat. Scat. Please wait till I recognize you. Mont Rainier? Scat. Any it is? Scat. It is scat, indeed, yes. That's one of the things the spore is sometimes called that you follow if you're tracking an animal. Go red. Body systems for 20. Body systems for 20 points. Teams, the bits of fibrous cartilage material found between your vertebrae that sometimes slip have what same name as computer storage units? Ridgecrest. The center processing unit? No, not the center. Remember, it has to be a body part now. This body part has what same name as a computer storage unit. It is the bits of cartilage that you find between your vertebrae that sometimes slip. What do you think, Mount Rainier? Tough question. They're called discs. Oh. Discs. You slip a disc sometimes. Try again, Red. Let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20 points. Teams, instead of using sand to sandblast a dirty building, some engineers, you guys are going to be engineers, they're using a softer abrasive with the formula NAHCO3, which is bicarbonate of something, but if you're in the kitchen chefs, it's known as baking what? Mount Rainier. Soda. Soda. That's it, bicarbonate of soda. Good. Red. Science potpourri for 20. Science potpourri for 20 points, teams. <laughs> the urban legend says that if you eat that candy called Pop Rocks and then drink a six-pack of soda, your stomach will swell up and explode because what kind of gas would <laughs> extend your stomach, Ridgecrest? Carbon dioxide? That's exactly right. And the Mythbusters busted it. It doesn't happen. Go green. Dateline size for 25. Dateline for 25, the big one in that category, teams. I think you will know this one. Scientists are trying to show that modern birds are the descendant of dinosaurs by turning a chicken beak through evolution going backwards into the snout of one of these dinosaurs that in the movie Jurassic World was Ridgecrest. T-Rex? 
not T-Rex, Mount Rainier, these kinds of dinosaurs in Jurassic World that were trained by the actor. Raptors. Raptors. Raptors, absolutely right. Those velociraptors, good. Go red, please. Dateline science for 20, please. Dateline science for 20 points, teams. This was very sad uh, and disturbing. Recently, the president of a peanut company was convicted and put in jail for 28 years because he released some peanuts that were tainted with what S initialed bacterium. Salmonella. Salmonella was the right answer. Try again, red. Green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. Team's two part answer. At the Washington National Arboretum, there's a tiny tree, 350 years old, a little white pine. It's a bonsai tree. To keep it that small, they have to keep trimming what two parts of that tree to keep it that small? What two parts, Rich Press? It's branches and its roots. That's exactly right. Good. Go. Uh, body systems for 25. Body systems for 25 points. Teams, for 25 points, if you're sitting at your desk in school, don't sit still. Fidget, even if your teacher tells you not to, because by fidgeting, you will increase what M initial process that is the rate at which your body burns up food. What is that M initial process that, that describes how fast you burn up your food? Metabolism. Try again, green. green. Yes, ma'am. Uh, let's get physical for five. Let's get physical for five points, teams. This pre-compressed spring the teachers used to teach the properties of waves made up the body of the dachshund in the Toy Story movies. Mount Rainier. Slinky. Yeah, the slinky dog. Good, go. Science potpourri for 25. Potpourri for 25, the big one in that category. Teams, when Pope Francis came to America, he did not have fancy red slippers on his feet. No, he wore orthopedic shoes. The name orthopedic means what? To straighten your feet. How many of you have ever been to an orthodontist? He straightens your teeth. Ortho is a prefix meaning straight. All right, we're down to the last couple questions here. Go again, please, red. Let's get physical for 25. Get physical for 25 points, teams. On Mythbusters, they wanted to see whether or not a penny dropped from the top of the Empire State Building would kill a person. They tried it with a mannequin. What happened was that penny fell at the rate of 65 miles per hour, which was its terminal what? V. And the myth was busted. It did not kill the person. The terminal what, Nick? Velocity. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Where next? Green things for 25. Green things for 25 points, teams. If a plant is heliotropic, heliotropic, does it kill the plants around it? Does it grow best in the shade? Or does it bend toward the light? Heliotropic. Green. Bends toward the light? Yeah, it bends toward the light. Yeah, like in phototropic. Good. All right. Go green. Uh, green things for five points. Green things for five points. Teams, this green thing, which is a kind of solar collector on the plant, actually has ribs and veins in it, just like we do, Nick. The leaf? The leaf, yeah. Go ahead. Body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams, sometimes justice is very harsh. An eye for an eye, a blank for a blank. A tooth for a tooth. Eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That'll do it. The buzzer says our game is over. We'll be back with that wrap up in a moment. Don't go away. Minds can achieve anything. We make sure they get to college. Federal student aid provides more than $150 billion in grants, loans, and work-study funds. 
to make college possible for anyone with the mind to get there. Because if given the chance, minds will do great things. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about money for college at studentaid.gov. Welcome back to Science. Well, everybody looks pretty exhausted here because everybody gave their best effort today. Just some outstanding players here, and they're all champs in my eyes, and I know yours as well. Our final tally is Ridgecrest 130, Mont Rainier 280. You're headed to the semifinals against Cora Rice, Jonathan and Nick and Paul, and also our alternates up there, Eunice and Jasper. Mr. Wallace, I know you're really happy about this team. And Ridgecrest, let's see some smiles over there. Let's see a gorgeous smile from Gorgeous, please. Jada, Christopher, nice game here. And our alternates back there, Marcus and Haywan. Congratulations, super game. Ms. Raleigh, thank you for everything you do. We can't do this without you here. Mr. Brewer, thank you. And that white coat over there, our science guy. And Ms. Denise Dunn, Prince George's best principal. I just said it. All right, good to have you here. We'll see you next time on the Science Bowl. Bye-bye.